open um, conversation as well. And then. So cool. Yeah. This will be fun. And then you'll each have your own recording if you want to go back to it too. Um, so, all right. So, hey, this is a special, this is our special group chat uh, for association chat. We can have up to 10 people on here for our conversation. And then as many people as we want can, you know, comment and, um, and if they just want to be observers and sort of be voyeuristic, uh, they can watch from LinkedIn and then comment and, and ask their questions as well. But um, mm -hmm. really, this is just supposed to be an open conversation for all of us. And it was inspired by our dear friend, Michael Butera, because um, I sent out uh, one of the Knowledge Hub emails and it inspired Michael to respond to me and say, hey, you know, I know we all we all you know, have these types of emails that go out and stuff, but I just wanted to respond to this because I think there are some things that people get wrong about this culture tech thing. And so I was really interested in what he had to say. I thought he was absolutely right. And I thought, well, let's, let's explore this and let's talk about it. So, um, so that's all I have to say. I actually want to, I thought Michael could help me like co-facilitate, just have this open discussion to explore more. And he actually sent me some, um, some ideas about some thought topics. So Michael, do you, did you want to say something about it? <laughs> more than happy. First, thank you, Kiki, for the opportunity yeah. to share with all of our friends uh, today. Well, of course, you know, there's no question that technology is influencing our lives. It always has, whatever the technology was. Uh, you know, uh, I suspect that when uh, people went from horses to buggies to cars to, uh, to trains, you know, and so forth and so on, and planes, that everything changed for them as well. The real difference that we face today, however, is one, the speed of the change. It's yeah. happening very rapidly. The, uh, the idea that what we face now are both positive, negative, and what I call ugly parts of technology. Uh, I'm thinking primarily of the misuse of technology. You know, in every, in every generation uh, and with people all around the world, there will always be some who use technology for the wrong purpose. That doesn't mean we shouldn't move forward. It just means we should be really careful about it. And then I think back to the late 1990s to something that uh, futurist John Nesbitt wrote. And it's a pretty simple phrase. It was the title of one of his books. It was called High Tech, High Touch. Ooh. And I think that that's the part that we may very well be missing. And not, you know, it depends what the workplace is or what we do. Now, all of us do online work. There ain't any question about that. And some of us work at home and some of us work hybrid and so forth. And so. But I was thinking recently about what we saw with young people uh, during the pandemic and their schooling. We absolutely know that they were able to join everybody technologically. So the culture provided them with a real opportunity. Some children did very well in that area and some didn't do so well. And now we know that in many respects, their learning has suffered in one way or another, particularly true of rural and marginalized communities. Mm -hmm. and, and one other part about rural communities that we miss a lot for those of us uh, who work with all this magic, and that is that many areas of rural America still do not have high speed uh, internet access. So there's this assumption that is a, a widespread, you know, uh, uh, that everybody who is young is using uh, computers and tablets and, uh, and the fastest thumbs in the West. <laughs> uh, but I, but I find it. I mean, I watch it. I was watching some uh, young people in my neighborhood who were going to school because the bus stops right in front of our house, mm -hmm. and. There they are, six feet away from one another, and they're texting each other. You know, right. <laughs> so where's the human part of this? The high tech, and I think that's the workplace dilemma 
that we face. Not that, mm-hmm. not that technology isn't going to invade all of our space. It is, without mm-hmm. a doubt. And uh, ChatGPT and all of those AI iterative kinds of things are going to come forward in one form or another. The question is, will they, they, will they be used for positive, negative, or ugly purposes? Mm-hmm. And, I, and I worry that uh, in our world, particularly in the association and nonprofit world, we're not really spending very much money helping our people learn how to use this stuff. Yeah, right. And, uh, you know, we've always had that problem in one form or another. There's not enough professional development. And there's this idea that all these young people, because they grew up with this technology, are just going to automatically, you know, come right into the world and love it and use it. It's just not true. It's not I true. Yeah. I see it in my I see it in my own grandchildren. So I've gone on long enough to get us started, at least. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, Michael, that was great. And you really hit a lot of big, I think, societal issues, especially with rural access to broadband, because that's a really important thing going forward for delivering telehealth services for people, who, because there's not enough doctors, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, just like there's not enough of a lot of healthcare people. But in listening to you talk, and then Thinking about the topic Kiki set up, association, culture, and technology, I, I just kept thinking about it. So the impact of technology is things like Google becoming a verb. Did you mm-hmm. Google that guy? Oh, just go Google mm-hmm. it. Google's a verb now. And it's like tissues are Kleenex. Mm-hmm. So they've crossed that threshold into becoming the name for a thing or a verb for a thing. And so I think that kind of impacts it as well. And as far as like uh, the the mean thing, I, of course, you said for ugly purposes, I immediately go to mean girls, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like mean text, mean social media post, and how are we controlling that? And I know a lot of associations worry about members or leaders tweeting indiscriminately, liking things that make them look bad. And mm-hmm. I think that's, that's impacting association culture. The fact that we have a lot of young people who stand six feet apart, like you pointed out, I actually saw that at a dinner party one time. This young man was in a room with like all these people who could have helped his career, but he was texting all his friends who weren't there. And I said yeah. something to him about it and he got out and went in the other room so he could keep texting. Wow. And I'm like, you could have like advanced your career 15 years and 15 minutes, but he just walked out of the room. And so you you have that. And then you see this new trend of Gen Z getting rid of the smartphone and going to the flip phone mm-hmm. because it's <laughs> less stressful because it's impacting their mental health. And so yeah. I think we're probably going to see some of that in the workplace as well. Well, I, I, again, I think those are excellent points as well. I was thinking of, of another one in our world, in the association world. Now, the offices that we have, where offices exist, whether they're at home, I'm a home-based office. That's where I do my work. I think that's true of a bunch of us on, on, on it. <laughs> And I've invested pretty heavily in making this a nice place for me to work. I have pretty fancy equipment, uh, all the latest uh, technology that I can, uh, you know, come up with and so forth. Uh, but offices that were built, you know, in the last 20 years were not built with technology considerations. So the best we do is, you know, we put some magic in so that they can get their internet connection. That's not a work environment where technology is serving a good purpose. And how many people can afford uh, to do maybe what we've done? I, Kiki, you're way into this. I know you have all the all the latest uh, gadgets, and I know from the things you try, the software you use, that uh, you know you're experimenting all the time. So what experiments are being done in our association community? Very few. Mm -hmm. So since we know that technology has invaded the space, there's no, like I say, no question there. The question for us is how are we going to use it to best serve our initial purposes and treat humans like humans? Yeah, I I think anytime you talk about technology, I know this isn't going to be a new phrase, but anytime you talk about technology, you need to think about what you're trying to do first and then add the technology to it. So I don't think it's any different in the office space because I've even been in office spaces where we had tons of technology because they thought they needed to go and buy the latest and greatest things. 
and nobody knew how to use it. And so they didn't use it. I mean, I, you know, and that's one of the reasons it was actually worked out to be an argument for me moving to being fully remote was that from the minute I, you know, walked into my most recent association and I saw the equipment that we had and we had some remote staff and I was asking, why are we not using this? Why are they still calling, you know, on the phone when we have all this equipment in here? And I kept asking and kept asking so that eventually when the pandemic hit, they're like, oh, wow, look, we have all this stuff. We can actually, right. we can actually use it, but it shouldn't be that way. And, it, and I think, you know, one of the things that I really wanted to contribute to the conversation, and I appreciate where you started with that, Michael, is, yeah, I don't think we should be assuming that the younger people necessarily have the, these abilities and want to use them. I think mm -hmm. it's more about, again, going back to the what are we trying to do and then how do we implement, you know, use these tools to do that. And so what I always and I think that takes experience in some cases. And in my case, I know how important it is to have those human connections. You know, I know, so I know that even if I'm not in the office, that's the first thing I want to do is maintain or recreate those, those connections. So I'm trying to think, how do I use my tools to do that? And how am I going to be very intentional about me? Like you said, keeping the human piece in there, how am I going to be very intentional about keeping that piece in there? And then how do I use my tools to do that? And I think that that's not something, if you don't have the experience, I don't know if you can think about it that way, because I, I was just having a conversation with some you know, mutual aged colleagues and friends saying <laughs> that, you know, we might even do this remote work better because we're trying to get stuff done. Like that's mm -hmm. just, where we are, we're trying to get stuff done and, and maintain, you know, and, you know, kind of do it backward instead of going, oh, wow, we have all these fancy gadgets. And so now we can go do, I don't know, that I kind of rambled off there, but. No, no, no. No, I, yeah, that's a good point, though. I mean, something that, the, what have we been saying lately, the bright, shiny thing? Mm -hmm. Everyone's getting distracted by the bright, shiny thing. And, you know, is it really going to do anything for you? And I, and Anna, it's an excellent point because you have to find the right tool for the right job. So mm -hmm. it's like I've been using this phrase last couple of days for some reason. If you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't just because you buy this fancy tool doesn't mean that it's going to actually help you. Yeah. And Beth says the uprise of AI and chat GPT is upping the technology usage versus keeping the human centered work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, I, I also think that communication has been easy and complicated at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, we can, almost anybody can get online and talk to somebody else. I remember when the idea of a telephone call where you could see the person on the other end was really going to be a spectacular <laughs> thing. Or Jetsons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And I know somewhere I have an old-fashioned Dick Tracy watch, you know. So right, right. Uh, yeah. So all these things have come to pass, and, uh, and, and they are fundamentally good. There's a lot of efficiency in the use of technology. The question I want us to delve on in the workplace is not just the efficiency, but how effective does it make it? Just because you're efficient doesn't make you effective. In fact, yeah. I would argue that effectiveness breeds efficiency versus the other way around. So yeah. in the association community uh, where, where we're doing so many things at the same time, you know, just how effective are we, particularly with small associations? Uh, you know, when you have an association where you have less than, you know, 10 employees and sometimes only five or less, uh, all this technology is is as much a burden as it is a help, and your your various client bases, your stakeholders are using all kinds of different technology that mm -hmm. doesn't work the way you want it to, and it's not the way you want the technology to work. It's the way you know your client, your mission uses the technology to be effective in its, mm -hmm. in its work. I mean, I see this, I see this all the time and it's really, really hard because, you know, and Cecilia and I have had conversations about this from, 
for over 10 years. I mean, it's going, maybe it's closer to 20 by this point. It's, you know, <laughs> from the very beginning, um, there's this frustration where if you love technology and you love the idea of what it can do for you to connect with other people and to um, identify ways for you to do things that you couldn't do otherwise, or it would be very difficult. You know, I mean, I'm thinking about the early days of social media and just all of the promise that we saw that it could have. Wow. You know, we could we could bring people together from a great distance and all together at one time. And and we didn't have to spend a lot of money to do it. Um, the the idea was like, wow, this is revolutionary. It can change the world. And it did change the world, but not in the ways that we thought it would necessarily. <laughs> and I think now when we have these epidemics of isolation and, you know, we have, it's truly a health crisis mm -hmm. that we have so many people who are lonely, who are, their, their health is at a detriment because they're not able to better connect with other human beings. We're working in an industry where we're supposed to be so good at bringing people together. And, and here we are, we're still beating our heads against the wall trying to figure out how can we, you know, how can we bring our members together and how can we do the work that we need to do effectively internally so that the association itself will run better? And it's really, I mean, it's actually, it's a huge struggle. And I think a lot of us, or maybe not a lot of us, maybe it was just, you know, in my head, <laughs> but I think like when, when we went through the pandemic, um, there was this moment where I thought, wow, we have this, this like time out where we are all forced to stay in one place, mm -hmm. let our ghosts catch up with ourselves. Our shadows were able to catch up with ourselves staying in one spot for a second. Mm -hmm. And, um, and what will we come away from this time where we could be centered and think about what it means to be together with other people and what we can do. And, um, as soon as people were really able to get together and do the things that they could do like before it's like let's run out and get busy 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 again and and i don't know what the huge takeaways from that time really were because i don't think that we solved that problem of of we have all this technology but we're we're missing the plot completely because we're not really able to do that part where we're bringing people together better than we did before and that's so frustrating. Yeah. Well, you know, and I think, uh, no, go, go ahead, Cecilia. Go ahead. Oh, sorry, Michael. I'm just like, well, oh, let me respond to that. First of all, Kiki, I think it's more like 25 years, but who's Is it 25? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <Track. laughs> Why are you so good at math, Cecilia? Why? <laughs> I don't know, because I'm not. <laughs> but, uh, but to your point about being left alone with our shadows during mm -hmm. the lockdown, and then how could we use that technology? I think that's a very human issue because people being alone, no matter what level of technology we have, is the problem. Because if we don't learn how to be comfortable with ourselves, it doesn't matter if we have the technology. And, and here's a good technology related example. I've had a paid Zoom account for many years, well before the lockdown. And I, because I thought this is so great, it's only $150 a year. I can have unlimited meetings, unlimited conversations. I can talk to all my friends all over the country or even the ones who are close by but can't drive over somewhere. We can mm -hmm. talk, we can see each other. Nobody wanted to be on camera. I know, I remember. I, I be seen. And then like we have the lockdown, you can't yeah. get them off camera. And that's where yeah. we came up with that funny saying, couldn't this Zoom meeting have been an email? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Probably could have, so. Well, yeah. you know, uh, that, that is another interesting point. I was thinking while Kiki was, uh, was, was talking about that, I kind of looked at the pandemic as the proverbial two steps forward, one step back. Mm -hmm. We made some interesting choices, probably because we had no choice. We weren't <laughs> together. We were wearing masks, <laughs> you know, all that other kind of stuff that we did. But as soon as the pandemic eased and ended, a lot of the operational uh, mechanisms, including technology, mm -hmm. kind of converted to the way it was. There was less need, so to speak, to use the technologies in a positive way to create good culture. When, when I work with associate, associations and we talk about culture and team building and all, they're important things without a doubt. 
but rarely I, I can almost stop them in their tracks when I say, well, how do you use technology to build your team? Mm. And they'll say, well, we have a Zoom meeting. You know, well, yeah, yes, okay, but that's not building, uh, that's not building culture. Mm. And then I, I was, uh, I saw some posts recently where someone said, well, let's quit talking about culture. Let's just talk about building community. Well, community and culture aren't really the same thing. Mm -hmm. So it could be that we're having trouble defining what technology culture is. Mm -hmm. What is a technology culture? What is its value to the mission that that we're engaged in? And how are we going to uh, how are we going to use it in a responsible way, knowing that there will always be characters out there doing bad things? I, I you know, uh, uh, I was just reading before we came on. Uh, a series of articles about all the cybersecurity problems that the school systems, both public and private, have had as a result of using technology. I mean, there's tons of information being stolen, and ransomware being installed and so forth and so on, uh, because we're not fully thinking it through. You know, my vision here is always, uh, can we think with the future in mind? When, when, or, when do organizations just get it done today, which is a lot of what happened during the pandemic, we needed, we needed something to be done, so we did it. And we did it pretty well. But did we think about it in the context of its long-term impact? And I think that's where we are with technology. But as I said when we started, it changes so fast. I mean, just take GPT as an example. Just in you know the last six months, all the new iterations all the magic, if you would, that's come. Uh, I don't know that everybody would call it magic, but it, it's it's it can be exciting. And uh, but are we harnessing it for human value? And I, I think that's where the association work culture issue collides. Associations are about uh, making sure that uh, they're serving a particular community. In an, in, in an intentional way. Well, are we or aren't we? And can we cultivate uh, a mechanism for doing that uh, using technology? It's not just typing away, you know? I mean, we have people, uh, you know, in the chat right now typing. A good thing, that's nice, that's nice. But what does it do for the way we treat one another as people, as humans, so? Well, and I think that's where you get a lot of this trolling. Uh, I think a great recent example is the unfortunate submersible situation where they were going down, try to see the Titanic and it imploded. It was a very horrible accident, uh, death. Some people are now saying it's negligence, but the amount of nastiness that just yeah. rolled out across mm -hmm. all the social media platforms, because it's easy to say something insulting when you're not in the room facing the consequences. And I think right. that's really what brings us back to your comments, Michael, about doing something bad or ugly. And my father gave me some really great advice when I was growing up. He said, never put anything in writing you wouldn't say to someone's face. Mm -hmm. But now that's what all these people are doing. They'll say something right they would never say to your face if they were, oh, yeah. they would never make that nasty, right, Dan? Yep, absolutely. I completely, I completely agree. Yeah, yeah, that's all the time. I don't even when I get into conversations about um, you know just really important topics, and they start to refer to you know a conversation that took place on social media. I I, I, I start to dismiss it, but yeah, they. I mean, you. Uh, sorry, I <laughs> totally lost track of what I was going to say, but the. Um, yeah, the the impacts that it has on things on when people just say something. I mean, I, I I know I talk to my family members all the time, and I'm like, I talk to you in person, and I know we don't have those kinds of conversations. For some reason, you can actually get on into a, a heated conversation and say all these things, and I know you don't mean it. You're just you just got really riled up, and they're saying something awful that you don't like. So, yeah, it's it's really challenging. I was. Um, you know, it, it's interesting because I started thinking it was a really that is a really good question, Michael, about the, um, you know, culture versus community and creating a technology culture. And, you know, and I was even thinking what you were saying, Cecilia, about, you know, just how we treat people. 
And when I originally saw these questions from, from Kiki, I was thinking about the things that I do to maintain those relationships and the things that I'm very intentional about. And it's really, and you make me think about it. I'm like, it's just for me to keep, you know, to keep pe treating people as humans and for me to fit into what's, you know, what's going on. Um, but it's not an, it's not a, an, an overarching technology culture, you know, or even culture, you know, action by our organization necessarily. I mean, I think everybody tries, but this is, it may sound incredibly silly, but even when you were saying, you know, cause I, I try to have, you know, virtual lunches with people and I schedule time for op open door, you know, open door time on my calendar for people to pop in and keep my camera, you know, on and open. And I do all of these things. So I do think that's helpful for me to maintain, you know, somewhat of a culture with my team. But I was also thinking about just silly things like that, that can go both ways. So, so we are in a Zoom meeting and we can all see each other's faces. So you would know if I'm, you know, whispering to somebody else or I'm on my phone or whatever. And I've been in these meetings where I'm with my team and they're all in a room <laughs> and I'm watching people at the end of, you know, a bit long table having little side conversations. Mm -hmm. but I can't do that. Mm -hmm. I can't do that on, on Zoom. I can't eat, not easily. Well, I can. Yeah. I, can chat. I mean, you can't. <laughs> like... <laughs> but at least, at least it looks less rude, you know? Yeah. I, mean, I can see them being rude. I, you can't see me being rude necessarily. Well, what, what, I don't, you know, you know, that's just a little thing I thought about as we were talking. Yeah, you know, Ann, you, you remind me of something that I see all the time. Uh, so let's say we're going to have a Zoom lunch. Hey, everybody comes on. Have you ever noticed how everybody turns their camera off while they're taking a bite to eat? Mm -hmm. yeah. If we were sitting yeah. in a room, everybody would just eat and continue the conversation. Right. Why do we do that when we're using technology? You know, yeah. why, why, why? And I think, it, you know, it's some kind of a one-on-one -on -one embarrassment because, you know, you're this little square. Um, yeah, for I mean, sure. Because so nobody wants this to be when their screen freezes. So, but we wouldn't do that in a normal human setting. So That's right. how, do, how, do we, um, how do we infuse in our technology actions uh, the human qualities. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I actually uh, am not afraid of chat GPT, but I am worried that it might be used for the wrong purposes. Right. And, uh, I mean, I tried it out a few times, and one of the things I know for sure is you better check the references. Mm. Yeah, right. it, it's, not that, it's not that they're purposefully erring. Mm -hmm. I, it's a... It's a a human made thing it's, you know, and so it's going to have errors in it it's not perfect uh, so all that all that is about creating culture so you know what is its societal impact what what is its impact when we speak with one another as real human beings uh, now there are many benefits i don't know where everybody's located right now but we're not close together in terms of geography, but we sure are close together on this screen. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. We're right on top of each other. That's yeah. right. Yeah, That's I'm right. Like, okay, this, this, and, so, yeah. so there are there are values that I don't think we're exploring in terms of how mm -hmm. to create tech culture that's mm -hmm. positive and useful uh, in in our workplace. And you know, just go one step further, if I may. For those of us who work at home, we have to understand that not everybody we're dealing with is at home. Some people are in offices. Some people are in cars. I mean, I, I don't want to be the purveyor of bad thoughts, but I don't like to talk to people when they're in a car. No, I don't, I don't want no. them to drive off. I want, the, I want them to focus. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> exactly. even, right, even right. if, and even if um, they're on, like I'm on speakerphone and they're talking to me, like 
I would much rather know that they're the passenger and somebody else is driving or something. Yeah. I don't I don't even want to talk to people when they're driving because I think it really does take their mind off of just focusing on the road. And I don't want to be on the phone with them if something bad happens, you know? Exactly. And I, I will end a call with someone if they tell me they're driving. And yeah. then they'll say, oh, no, it's on hands-free. And I'll say, I don't care. You're distracted. And distracted driving is a big danger. Yeah. And I think it also, and here's coming back to like how it makes us feel because community and culture are directly tied to how we feel and how we're experiencing. I feel kind of slighted as when he's like, well, I'm just making these phone calls because I'm driving. Like, you're, oh, I know, I know. Yeah. I'm like, well, why you want to call me when you actually want to talk? And, and the same thing for people who say, hi, I want to have a meeting with you. Go to my calendar yes. app yeah. and set up the uh, meeting yourself. I was like, I didn't, you know, I don't, you invited me. Right, 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 right. If they come to you, they have to make an effort is my mind because I'm like, wait, you're making me work? Wait, I don't like this is this is off. You you do all of this logistics stuff. You know, yeah, that, that's, that's the humanity of it, Kiki, right there. Yeah. It's like if you yeah. invite me to lunch, don't make me make the reservation. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. one of the one of the interesting things about uh, what we've seen in in technology outside, think of it for a few moments. Now, I bet I'm older than most of the people on this call. Uh, I remember when you used to drive into a gas station, roll down a window. Remember, roll. You didn't press a button. Yeah, and, I remember. And yeah. usually a man came running out from a little shed. And, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, he would look at you and you would say, you know, fill it up or five dollars. when the gas was five bucks. Yeah. And he said, would you like me to check your oil? You know, and you'd pop the hood and then check the oil. You know, we're, we, that, there was a personalization there. No. One of the efficiencies on the business side was, okay, you drive in, you get out of the car, you pump the gas, you put the credit card in or you scan it or whatever it is. They don't need all those people anymore to do all that work that they that they once did. So mm -hmm. I think one of the fears of technology is that it's taking away jobs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, inevitably it will, it, it will create jobs. All technologies have eventually created new kinds of work. But it takes time for that to happen. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't know that I'll live long enough to see it. But, you know, your car may drive into the gas station on its own. A robot may pump the gas if we still use gas. Anyway. Right. Right. Lean, I should say. And, <laughs> and, you know, take you back out onto the road and off to where you're going. These, uh, so there are an enormous number of benefits to technology. But when it comes to this issue of culture, I don't think we're having that conversation. Ooh. We're not talking about creating a tech culture as part of our culture. We're talking about how we use technology for efficiency, for the things we're doing right now. I mean, we would have never been able, how long would it have taken us to drive to some place, right? Yeah. You know, sit down, have a cup of coffee. I'd prefer a beer or wine. And, <laughs> and have this conversation. You, you couldn't do it. You well, could, uh, so how would we, how would we, if we were to sit here and, and like we would also want to do if we had beer, wine or coffee together, uh, try to solve all the world's problems, how would we, how would we solve this, this issue or try to solve this issue of cultivating culture on purpose, using the technology, understanding the drawbacks um and having it help us and not necessarily hurt us or at least trying to like account for the ways that it can get in the way what are some of the potential solutions that are, are well here? first of all i'm gonna jump in on this one because i'm gonna push back on michael a little bit i don't agree that there's tech culture i know michael's like what a surprise <laughs> i really never put this back when i talk <laughs> <laughs> I think tech culture is Silicon Valley, in my opinion. And so when we look at community and culture and technology, mm -hmm. all communities have a culture. Is mm -hmm. that a good culture or a bad culture? Or an eh, kind of mediocre culture? And then how does technology support our culture? Because we've all heard that famous saying, culture eats strategy for breakfast, right? Mm -hmm. When we're talking about our work and associations. So if we're going to have a good culture, 
technology is a tool that supports that. And I think making culture about the technology is reversing it. It's it's putting the cart before the horse. Mm -hmm. so old tech, right? It's putting the cart before the horse. Well, that cart's not going to go anywhere because the horse is behind it. So the technology has to be behind us and dry, you know, when we use it. And I think another thing for solving the, you know, technology supporting our cultures and communities is making sure we have the right technology, you know, and kind of touched on this earlier, make sure you have the right tool. And you're not just layering on things because you think, oh, if I add Asana and Blue Sky and all this stuff that's like, what? It's like, it's all built into Microsoft already. <laughs> what do you add yeah. up for? Let's have focus. Let's streamline it because it's supposed to help us connect. And, you know, I remember when people used to get interoffice memos and we would walk around and put them in the mail box at work as how long I've been around, <laughs> um, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, so it's, it's things like that. It's like, oh, you get the memo. Oh, we got a memo. It's <laughs> an email. Oh, we got this yeah. email. Did you see that yeah. email or did you see the text or something? You know, so yeah. it, those things are what bring us together and sometimes freak us out. Like, did you see the memo that we don't get Friday off anymore? You know, or something. <laughs> right. That's pretty funny. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I, I agree with you. So that's why I, I, I agree with you. And I think that maybe I see some of what Michael is saying, because I think you're right. It's a culture. And then it's almost like, uh, yeah, what? how do we use technology to create or maintain that culture? And I was also listening to some of the things we've all said, just like little one-offs. It's that I don't know if Michael, if you were thinking about kind of a code of conduct, you know, with using technology, like how do we use it and and still main to help us maintain that culture or create a sense of belonging for that community that we're trying to create? Because I think that's some of the stuff that I don't think we're we're looking like. <laughs> so, see, you just said that. I'm like, I haven't had that conversation with anyone until today about somebody <laughs> sending me their calendar when they want to set up a meeting with me. But that's like a, you know, I remember when we used to have those regular trainings on, you know, don't go into somebody's office and take a pen off of their desk. That's rude, you know, or don't <laughs> yell at somebody when they're walking past your office because oh, that's man. rude, you know. Like I remember having all those kinds of trainings about, you know, the work etiquette and kind of oh, how man. we should act. And maybe there's a little bit of that, that that that's necessary. And at the same time, I have done a little bit um, with someone I know who who does a lot in the belonging space on how to use, you know, your Zoom effectively, you know, how to set things up so it does appear as if um, I'm not doing it today because I'm not on Zoom and I'm still learning how to use the different tools, but, you know, how to set them up. So like you were even saying too, like if I were sitting across from you, like it gives you the option for, you know, a mirrored view versus a non-mirror view. Well, we don't look in a mirror. We look across from people. So we shouldn't be, we shouldn't be setting it up that way. You know, you should set it up so that it's close to your camera. So you're looking at people, you know, and all those things. And, you know, I shouldn't be over here on my computer, you know, <laughs> doing all of that. So I, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure if, if that was what you were thinking before too, but I think there's kind of a combination of both. And mm -hmm. I also do think people tend to use culture and community interchangeably and it's yeah. well not. first of all i want to uh, thank cecilia for doing a better job of explaining what i was trying to say <laughs> than i did uh, so yeah uh, I, I don't think we have a language yet that's very good you know and technology there there isn't a good set of technology lingo floating around out there and i hate to say what i'm about to say but that's largely when the technology folks who speak um, some language that I'm not sure what it is. I, I, I tell this story all the time. I used to have a friend who uh, was uh, the C CIO, and I one day said to him, you know, I know every word you used. I can define every word you use. I know it was a sentence with the correct structure, and I still have no idea at all what you just said. <laughs> So, so uh, I believe that what we want is a human-centered culture in our organization. So, it, you know, where do you put the word technology in there? Do you say human-centered technology culture? Eh, probably not. But what we are talking about is a human-centered uh, culture that infuses 
uh, the appropriate use of modern technologies. Mm. And, you know, uh, you've probably all done team building things over time. Mm. And one of the things we do is we try to have team norms. And I've, I've often asked this questions when I go in to do a training. I say, what are your team norms? I have never seen one norm about technology. Interesting. Never, never has anybody showed me one. They have uh, some of the things that have been mentioned by Ann. You know, be polite. Uh, you know, everybody gets to speak. We could go through this list on our own. But nobody says, you know, uh, uh, use technology in a way that uh, is appropriate to uh, the other person. Because there's kind of like an assumption. If you're polite, well, that means you'll be technology polite. No, that's not true. <laughs> it's just it's just not true. That's so, true. This are, and you know, you're just reminding me of some of my little pet peeves about technology. Like if you're texting, if some, you send somebody a night, like I'm a writer, so I write usually complete sentences and I'll get something back. K. <laughs> <laughs> Not even okay, just K. And then the other thing that's really been rankling me the last few months is yep. Yep. Oh, I'm guilty of yep. I'm, I'm a yepper. That's one in the corner then. No. <laughs> but I, mean, I don't know why it bothers me because yep is like a Western version of yes and a Midwestern yeah. version of yes. But I'm just like, why can't you just say yes? Why yep? Yeah. It just sounds so, when you're reading it in a text, it seems so disdainful and dismissive. Those just that, that's the Missouri in you. That's the Missouri in you. Show me, show me, show me. Well, you, you know, your point's well taken. Uh, I sent something to my granddaughter not too long ago, and she sent back BC. BC. What? It stands for because. No, yeah. Oh, BC. Okay. BC. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. Does it sound like a P? It's uh, not like me see. Oh, and I was like, that's a new one. <laughs> oh, I, I, I have to work on my diction. What can I do? <laughs> have some more wine with lunch. You'll be fine. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, so uh, think, of, think of it like in the team building world that I was referring to. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to go to uh, Kiki's uh, question to us. Well, what would be some of the things that we would put down as, let's call it a norm, I don't like the word best practices. I think there's always next practices, but you know, so what would be some of the norms that we would expect of each other uh, in the use of technology? How would we say that if we were to, to write it down and say, here, here are our team's, you know, 10 norms. I like that. I mean, it's sort of like, you know, guidelines for behavior at meetings. We have those. We have codes of conduct, like Ann mentioned, which I love that. You know, I think your code of conduct should include the technology area as well. I think that's an excellent point. One thing I mean, we've we, seen. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say one thing that I have seen um, or heard brought up at, at a couple of different places is this idea of establishing hours for work emails and um, this idea that almost always the the point is that they're not supposed to be sending them during uh, times outside of working hours and then almost always right after understanding that that's supposed to be the rule somebody explains how well but sometimes I send them but I don't expect anybody to respond to them so <laughs> yeah. I actually I actually have yet to meet anyone who really adheres to it but mm -hmm. I have heard it brought up as something that is supposed to be the expectation that you don't do the emails the work related emails during um, outside of working hours and I think that that I still think that it's a good sign because I see that as organizations trying to create healthy boundaries for staff. Like I see the people that are working there caring about the individuals, understanding that they're getting burnt out, that they, you know, a lot of us have a hard time of creating these boundaries. Um, those of us who've worked from home for a long time are, are used to sort of, we've, we've established things that work for us. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of people who either they have flexible work schedules and they haven't quite figured out those boundaries yet or it's still relatively new, um, I think it's hard. I mean, it's even hard for us, right, that that we say enough. 
I have this bell that um, I created a ritual. And at the end of the workday, when I'm done, completely done with work, and I'm saying, okay, this is, this is it. I'm putting it away and I'm going out of my office and now it's the rest of the day, right? It's something that's not work. I turn off all my lights and the very last thing I do is I ring the bell. And then whenever I'm getting ready to start work every morning, I turn on my lights, I get situated and I ring the bell. And that's like- Oh wow, the thing. clock them in and clock it out. Yep, I'm, I'm clocking in, I'm clocking out. And the, the bell, everybody in the house knows when they hear the bell, yeah. oh, she's, it. she's, she's working. And then, you know, then I ring the bell when I'm done, but. Well, you yeah. know, you're, you're, reminding me, you're reminding me of a story I heard from one of the groups I was working with. They decided to hire a, a virtual assistant entity. It happens that this virtual assistant enemy, uh, entity. Enemy. <laughs> I was in the <laughs> virtual assistant. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> the virtual assistant enemy uh, was in the Philippines. Oh, yeah. Now, think of the time difference. Yeah. So, yeah. this particular uh, enterprise had offices in London, New York, Chicago, San Francisco, and a virtual assistant in the Philippines. Wow. Uh, let's talk about the work day for a second. Yeah. Because in England, <laughs> it's six hours ahead, right? Okay. Yeah. So, that's what I mean by we're not thinking this through when it comes to technology has made all that possible. That's not bad. That's okay. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. how do you, you know, what, what would be the norm? You know, just take, you know, is it the time in your location? Right. Or, right. or uh, you know, do, do we use Greenwich Mean Time? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> how do you do that? You know, that's such an excellent point. Because uh, I know you all know I, I teach online courses to help people get ready for CAE or earn CAE credit or just learn more uh, about what we do as nonprofit managers. And we have an evening course that meets at 530 in the evening. We had somebody from India sign up. Mm -hmm. We didn't think about the fact it's three o'clock in the morning oh my yeah. God. in India because we didn't anticipate global participation because that program's just growing into the, but he works at a big, you know, nonprofit organization that we've all heard of. I don't know if it's okay to say it, uh, but, yeah. um, you know, it, it, but, but he's also the first person from India to get the CAE. So yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so it's, but, you know, thinking about that, those time differences, how do you talk to people, the the membership community aspect of it. Uh, I heard an example years ago along what Kiki was saying, and then also what you're saying, Michael, people are trying to figure out as an international association, well, how, how can we get more volunteers? Well, the volunteers outside the U.S. were like, you do everything on U.S. time. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. thing on our time. Oh, well, maybe we should do that. Yeah, there's a good idea. So, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you, you, we have to nurture, feed, if you would, the good side of technology. Mm -hmm. And I, I think simple things like finding answers to what are team norms, hours, like you mentioned, those are good. Those are, those are, used to be an easy question. Okay, we right. close at four thirty or five o'clock, or we close at three thirty. Now, because yeah. we've got people all over the place, because technology made that possible, right? So when we when we close the office in Washington D.C. at four o'clock, it's only one o'clock on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you know when we had offices, the people on the West Coast just worked till four. So it was mm -hmm. like, you know, if you were on the East Coast, you could call somebody out in the West Coast all the way up to seven o'clock. The day was expanded. Okay. Is that right? Is that how we're going to use technology now? So so mm -hmm. I, I think we have to answer questions like I said. So what are the norms for a team as it relates to technology? What are the norms in terms of gathering? Do we always mm -hmm. gather, you know, like we are right now? Mm -hmm. uh, I hear more and more about, well, we'll have a quarterly in-person meeting or we'll have a once a year retreat. I hate the word retreat, by the way. Do you really? <laughs> I just heard that recently from someone. So I'm curious well, to hear. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why. I spent a little bit of time in Uncle Sam's army. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> and you, so you don't believe in yeah. retreats. You're like, <laughs> charge ahead. It's not that, but they teach you, they teach uh, at the Army War College, and they say the most difficult maneuver of all military maneuvers is a retreat. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really hard because you know, people pay. Now, we just assume that everybody's going to come there, oh, oh, energized to do, you know, whatever it is we intended them to do. Kind of, it's just not true. You know, a, a lot of people come because they think they're going to get some play time. Mm. And so I, w- I would rather us talk uh, uh, about, you know, uh, a quarterly investment, uh, you know, a, a time for us to gather, uh, an opportunity to build relationships. So, you know, a capacity building meeting, anything like that versus the word. OK, enough of that comment. <laughs> I just think it's funny. It's the second time I've heard it this week, and it makes a lot of sense. And I hadn't yeah. even thought about it. So what? What? So we need to ask ourselves the question. Like Kiki started us down this path, you know. So how do we use technology in a human-centered, cultural, culturally appropriate way? Hmm. And let's think of the things we would normally do we would have team norms so what are are the team norms associated with technology we would have certain values what are the values of an enterprise associated with technology when we talk about our mission might it change ever so slightly here's another one of my favorite ones when i work with organizations i look at their um, uh, job descriptions and their job descriptions when it comes to technology are just horrific. I mean, you know, the the big thing will be that they can use the Microsoft suite. Okay, everybody can use the Microsoft suite. Mm-hmm. I'm not even sure everybody knows what the Microsoft suite is because it goes <laughs> all the time, you know. Yeah, uh, the uh, yeah. But isn't it more about the ability to analyze with the use of technology? Think of all the things you could do with what we're doing today. You can find out how many people were here, who spent how much time on the line. You know, did they ask any questions? We go on and on. You know, I don't have to go through that several handfuls of things that we're now able to do. That's bringing data in. So is data infusion, uh, uh, data infusion, a part of technology in our in our new culture? It is a new culture, and we haven't learned how to deal with it yet. I'm saying that we should ask those questions and we should be intentional about it. So, you know, think of all the things we would do normally when we had the old fashioned office. And I'll just add, the, you know, put in, put in front of it technology. Well, what would we, you know, what's the technology equivalent of this? And I don't think, we're, I personally don't think we're doing that. Uh, and, and, and I, I, you know, I truly hope we will because. I do think that technology adds a lot of value. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a Luddite about this at all. Mm-hmm. I do worry about ChatGPT uh, because I think it is capable of great misuse. Uh, right. but, having, but having said all those kinds of things, what are the elements of technology that we would apply to what we already know to be workplace culture and we're not yeah. acting that we are not maybe you are but i haven't seen that in many places so you know i would just ask you so in all of your work how many people are dealing with how we use technology in the workplace other than for efficiency mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it is interesting because you made me feel like i'm like we are a little bit uh maybe we're a little bit ahead of the game because we do have some things and i just pulled this out communicating effectively with clarity and respect. Great. Mm-hmm. Um, like we did a lot of culture work starting in starting in 2020. We also got a new CEO at the beginning of 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so it was all great time for us to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, And we do have a, a, doc, a thing, a laminated thing like this for meetings and um, how we collaborate, how we, and our values. And but what we don't have, I don't think so. Now you made me think about it. I like that's the one thing I just wrote down: the taking all of your values and then correlating that to technology. And, I mean, it is a little bit because collaborate is one of our. Yeah, sure. 
Well, you, you know, uh, again, this is this is what we're learning to do, and that will eventually change the the workplace culture that we all deal with. Uh, something I just read the other day, a U.S. Uh, uh, Department of Labor statistic, something like 35 percent of the workforce works every day from their home. Mm, wow. Mm. That's that's a that's, huge number of that's people. That's huge. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's yeah. tens of that's tens of millions of people, you know, uh, and I think in our community, you know, a lot of what it was used for were, as I said before, just efficiencies. We closed down offices that meant that we didn't have to pay for the space. But did we use that money to uh, to build on the culture of the organization or was it a savings? Uh, what did we use that money for? Because ultimately, how we use our resources is, is, is one of the huge keys in determining what the culture is. Right. If we save money but don't invest it in the people, if we don't invest it in the cause, the mission, then... What was that savings for? Well, and you know, Michael, you've got me thinking about transhumanism now. <laughs> because if we're t talking about culture and community and having guidelines and c consistently training each other, what happens when we're all just having our communications devices embedded in us? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, th th there's an issue. You know, I, I was working with a group. And somebody had this great idea using augmented reality. You know, those uh, things you put in. After they had this great idea, I said to them, so how many of your clients have that equipment? There you go. And, and, mm -hmm. You know, and salads. You know, they have no idea at all. We don't know if they have that equipment. Now, it might be a very good thing. We might mm -hmm. actually create, we might create online courses of a whole different nature as a result of having augmented reality, uh, hardware and software. I think that's probably good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The that's training, good. the training that's happening with augmented reality is, is Absolutely. so powerful, but I think that, um, you know, this idea that we're getting further and further away from human connection where it's, I mean, some of the biological factors that are at play with just sharing the same space with somebody else. Um, you know, and I know we're not talking about like, you know, kind of there was this, it's either all tech and we're all isolated or it's all in person. It's, you know, it's, it's a blend. Right. But, but I think that our argument or what we're, what we're sort of grappling with right now is this idea of how do we make sure that we get enough, that we get that mix right? And how do we make sure that we don't lose sight of those really powerful, um, facts and truths of, of how important it is for us to connect human to human and just having that, that personal touch. And, you know, I, I am very guilty of just getting so sick and tired of being told over and over and over again how we have to customize our messages over the years. And it's like when people say customize, then there's some sort of tech thing that comes into play and it just replaces the first name and like all of this <laughs> stuff. And it's like, no, no, no. Um, but the, the phone call, right? The phone call, for, which still technology, but somebody reaching out, even an email where it is truly a human being sending a message to you specifically saying, Michael, Cecilia, and you know, like I'm connecting to you today. Michael, it's been a long time since we caught up. How are things going? You've, I've noticed that you've been looking really healthy lately. What's going on with your with your health routine? You know? uh, tell me all your secrets, you know? Um, it's, it's like that connection. You just do that a little bit and it counts for so much versus you could, yeah, sure. You could send out 150 messages and have it have the first name in there, but how effective are those? Right. Mm -hmm. And um, making the time to just have that one-on-one -on -one connection, you know, is so, so powerful. And I, I feel like um, that's the part that's, that's the part that is so meaningful that, that, we, we just have to work that in and figure out how to make sure that the value of that, we hold on to it and we, we build it into our lives. 
Mm-hmm. You know, I, I know we're running out of time, Kiki, but I, uh, you know, you reminded me uh, when you were just going through that piece there. Think of calling uh, uh, an organization up these days and getting one of those. Uh, please listen to this message because <laughs> recently we changed our. And you're into the punch button routine, uh, you know. So uh, I, I happen to be a, a, a Maxwell certified team member. And I tell this story all the time. I can call the vice president of that organization. And it's thousands of people. I guarantee you he will call me back. Not because, wow. not because I'm Michael Butera. <laughs> It is one of their standards. Every if you make a call, you get a response. You get a real human. You know, you don't have to go to one of those chat things. Now, I'm not against the chat things if it's something that can be answered. You know, it's like that TV ever. I don't know if you've seen the TV advertisement or excuse me, radio one, where the, the, the person asks a question. They need someone to come out and take care of their plumbing, and. Finally, the the client says, uh, are you a real person or are you a robot? And, oh, you got me. I'm a robot. But I can transfer you. And the person says, well, if you transfer me, you know, will somebody be able to come out this afternoon and fix my water heater? And the the robot says, no, it's just another robot. You know, it's just another robot. It's just another robot. That's, that's so funny. That's the part of workplace called in in our community, meaning the association community. Nothing is more important than how we convene people and how it is that we communicate uh, the content, the, the the important issues uh, that come before us. Uh, Kiki, one of the things I like about your work is you're an experimenter. Mm-hmm. You clearly go out and try this and try that. And if it works fine, if it doesn't work, you quietly get rid of it and go to something else. (laughs) I mean, I'm experimenting with this format today on doing this. Yeah. Yeah. But you don't say, oh, that was really a bummer. I'm out of that one. You know, you (laughs) I made some evaluation. I tried it a few times. It doesn't work. Let's go on. Try something else. We're not very, we're not very good at that. And it is human to experiment. It is human to try new things. That's why we've advanced as uh, as humankind. We keep trying new things, you know, whether it was the wheel or whether it's technology. And and now we have to apply some of those same principles, but we're not asking the right questions about technology. That's really my point. That's, okay. That's right. And just on your wheel comment, I know there was somebody out there going, that thing will never go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Well, um, I want to thank you, Michael, again, for inspiring this this group discussion. And I want to thank you, Cecilia and Anne, for being brave and jumping on. And I know that this is a little different than like doing like a Zoom group chat. But the one thing that I didn't like about doing the group chats like we did before is that I felt like, you know, sometimes you know, people still miss out and they, there's like good stuff and I feel like they could get something from it. So I am experimenting. I'm really trying to figure out the right blend so that, you know, we can all benefit from each other, you know, here, but then other people can, if they missed it, they can still benefit from being a part of it. So Sounds to me like humanizing technology. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. So you'll have to let me know individually, like send me and let me let me know what worked or didn't work for you or if you think that there's a way to make it better. But um, and that goes for anyone who's like watching this or listening to this later. But um, thank you all for participating today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. And my thanks to Cecilia and Anne for joining us. Yes. Okay. Thank That's you great. so much. Thank have you. A for day, folks. Right. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Bye. Bye. So long. We're still in the show. Oh, I'm trying to leave. Leave.